Yo guys, what is up? Today we are covering chapter 315 of My Hero Academia that just got released. So, without further ado, let's hop right in this chapter. And so the chapter starts off with Overhaul and Nagant changing clothes and getting ready to pursue Deku. Overhaul says he knows that the student all for one was talking about because he's the one who was inflicted with this hero syndrome and that he already ruined Overhaul's plans and Nagant jokes about how she said he would be useful, but it's almost as if fate is helping them. So Overhaul agrees to help follow Lady Nagant and help her identify the target at hand as long as she promises to take him to the boss after it's done. It then jumps to the president. Overhaul is screaming at Nagant because he's already fulfilled his part of the deal a long time ago and identified Deku. And she has her gun aimed at him and says that from now on she'll have to increase the speed of her bullets even if it reduces her accuracy. And so Lady Nagant fires and shoots at Overhaul while co commenting about how she hates the hero education and that only when a person dies from Deku's mistakes will he understand the problems that hero society faces. And she expects Deku to hesitate in saving Overhaul, which would give her a chance to win, but Deku moves immediately. And we finally get an explanation of the third user's quirk, which is called Fajin. It accumulates kinetic energy through repeated movements and releases it explosively. And Deku was using his legs to avoid Lady Nagant's shots last chapter, so he releases it all now and uses Black Whip to boost his centrifugal force. And Deku thinks to himself that he took inspiration from a scene that anyone from his generation who's a fanboy like himself has seen multiple times. And the scene was All Might soaring through the skies faster than any bullet and he calls this a mix of one for all at 45% plus Fajin at 100% and he pushes Overhaul to the ground before Lady Nagant's bullet hits him. Nagant is immediately impressed not only because of Deku's speed but also because he started moving in Overhaul's direction at the exact moment she aimed the gun at him without any hesitation. This is kind of a flashback to an extent of Deku moving without any hesitation within saving Bakugo within the first few episodes of My Hero Academia. So it's cool to see that not only All Might recognize this but of course Lady Nagant recognizes that Deku moves without any form of hesitation. He is the embodiment of a hero. Deku tells Chisiki he'll talk to him later and he prepares to attack Lady Nagant. The third user appears in Deku's head and he says that from the use of Deku's ability, his body received damage because he was using all quirks simultaneously. But just now he only used one for all, Fajin and Black Whip, just three quirks, so he's safe to go now and that there is still kinetic energy left in his right leg, so he prepares to attack Lady Nagant. And Deku's next attack was a quote-unquote 100% Manchester smash where he smashed Lady Nagant's right arm. Deku told Lady Nagant it was over because her gun arm was destroyed and Lady Nagant was seen free falling and in a state of amazement at Deku. And she remembered what the chairman told her once about using her quirk to make society better. And she had to remember this quote before she became so tired of that kind of fake lip service she views. And at that moment while she was falling, Deku took her hand to prevent her from falling and, and, he, and he wanted to save her. Deku told her that the bullet's trajectory towards Chisaki was a miss, and if she really supported All for One, she could have easily shot the bullet towards Chisaki's waist and it would have been over for him, he would have died. And Deku told her that she still has the heart of a hero, that she intentionally missed and that she never wanted to hurt Chisaki to begin with. And Nagant showed a sincere smile, and she was about to tell Deku how much of a true hero Deku truly is, and as she smiled at him, her body began to crack and explode. The scene suddenly changes, and we see All for One saying that he knew people's hearts were fluid and ever-changing, so he made sure to fully prepare if she were to breach any form of their contract. And he sarcastically mimicked, feeling pity for Nagant because she was being used by others up until the end of her life, from the Public Safety Commission to himself, both hero and villain alike. And if she were to blame anyone, she should instead blame herself for her useful quirk. What a true villain. In the last panel, we see Hawks' feathers flying towards the falling and burnt Nagant. And oh my gosh, our boy Hawks is here and he catches her midair while showing that his wings have slightly recovered. Kaigo Takami seems to be back despite not being fully recovered with his wings since his near-death battle with Dobby. However, this is the end of the chapter and a heartbreaking one at that. We can see that All for One has found a way to manipulate the body of those he affects by being able to destroy their bodies if they change their heart and sway towards the side of heroism. Although this is just speculation, I believe when All for One gave her this new quirk that he likely implanted this kind of stipulation within her. And sadly, the words of All for One were sadly too true. She was consistently used by others up until the end and we can see that Deku was truly believing she was still a hero at heart and wanted to save her and have her join alongside him on his quest to bring down one for all but it seems too late for however if all for one did something similar for overhaul and gave him as well a quirk or in fact his own quirk back it's entirely possible that it could save Lady Nagant's life but that would mean that there was 
for whatever reason. There was no, none of the stipulation within with an overhaul that would cause him to also burn up. And let's not forget that Lady Nagant just did try to kill Overhaul, so I don't think he'd be too inclined to do that. But I really hope this isn't the end of Lady Nagant, given that she's had so much character development and she's such a strong woman character at that, which we love to see within within a shonen. Additionally, Deku's new ability from the third Fage and seems to be really similar to Zenetsu from uh, from Demon Slayer, where there's an immense explosion of power. So I imagine if Deku were able to combine this with a true one percent of one for all, he could likely blitz an enemy such as All for One and completely decimate them with a godly punch. Although in his fight for his All for One, I don't think this will be nearly enough and that he'll need to use all of his quirks simultaneously, especially the support ones, in order to make sure that he's able to survive. But in, able to, but in order to do that, he'll need to fully um, prepare his body to withstand all of these quirks simultaneously, as we can see the damage that he's currently withstained. From the end of the chapter with Hawk shown to catch Nagant, it'll obviously be an emotional um, realization that someone he obviously once looked up to within the same kind of coursing at the Public Safety Commission is now presumably dead or severely injured, and it's probably a crazy realization for him to see that someone he truly did look up to really did sway towards the side of villainism, which is... You know, it, it just it's going to add depth to the story and kind of make Hawks continually question this life he wants. Because as we know, Hawks just wants to have a laid back society where he doesn't even need to work. He wants everybody to just be relaxed. But clearly, this isn't a a possibility for any time in the near future until All for One is defeated and the state of heroism is back and fully fledged in within this, within society. This was a really intense chapter, and I feel like these past chapters, they've been, they've been adding so much depth into Gant, so there's 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 no way she's truly going to be dead, at least we can hope. However, with Horikoshi, we, we really do never know what's going to be the fate of these characters, but we can only hope. So guys, if you enjoyed this uh, this chapter summary and these chapter leaks and the discussion on it, um, I would really appreciate you leaving a like, a comment, or a subscription as always. Anyways, as always guys, I will catch you all next time within the next video.